Okay, we'll start off uh, with this is the, another one of uh, my, uh, what we're calling master teaching classes. Just giving you some of my knowledge of teaching in, in two parts. The first part's for yourselves, the second part's for your students or prospective students in the future, should you wish to begin teaching. Last week, uh, we did a few little, there are eight little foot, uh, foot methods, stepping methods that we that you have to know for yourself just to give you the basic balance. And these are usually given before you even start learning the Taiji form. I tend nowadays to go straight into the Taiji form because most people haven't got the patience to do that for three weeks before going on to the next move. So these little stepping movements are really good things to give to your students. It gives you something to teach them. They think they know they're, then they're getting something real out of it. Okay, well we did the first one last time. So we'll do, just go straight into the, uh, let's just so before we start, it's always good to have some, as we did yesterday, it's always good to have uh, some sort of uh, warm-up exercise or something that gets you going and, and um, in keeping with the true internal martial arts way. You never do exercises for the sake of doing exercises. So you wouldn't uh, you know, do balletic type exercises because they, they have no real function. So you always do exercises that are going to have real function. As we did yesterday with the Bagua, we did the uh, Bagua internal power methods. They have function because they're useful. They teach you something. But it's also a good way of getting the class warmed up, especially on a cold day. And also getting the energy combined. It's always very important to not have scattered energy in a, in a class. Uh, I've learned over the years how to, how to draw everyone's energy in and that's what I'll, I'll be trying to teach you how to do it as well. Even when you've only got a class, small class of five people, you still have to gather that energy in and have it all concentrated in order to have a really good atmosphere in a class. If you haven't got a good atmosphere in a class and the teacher's not happy, then the class is not happy. So these are just ways of getting that energy all centred, ready to be in the, the major part of the teaching. I'll just give you a couple of little things that I, that I've, I learnt Xing Yi many, many years ago, but I, it said that you, it's impossible to learn three of internal arts. It said that it would take three lifetimes to learn three internal arts. Many people do, but they're always jack of all trades, they're never masters. So. Um, I only specialised in two martial arts, that's Taiji and the Bagua, but I still kept my Xingyi training methods up just because they're really good things, good things for warm-up exercises. And they're useful as well. So let's start, I'll face this way. We're going to do again like we did yesterday, the slapping of the foot and the dragging of the foot up. Always in Xingyi, it's, it's that move. A lot of people put the weight on the front leg, but that's incorrect. It's always that, and the back foot comes up always maintaining your balance and your center of gravity. Center of gravity in Xing Yi, as in push hands in Tai Chi, should be here. That's where your center of gravity is, here and here. So when you change your, cent change your weight, you don't change it right to the back foot, you change it to just here. And then when you change it to the front foot, you change it to just there. Always maintaining that forwards and backwards leading position so that you can then <laughs> You can come straight, straight off that back foot. If you're right back on the back foot, you've got to actually push yourself up before you come forward, you see? There are instances in Taiji, of course, when you have all of your weight on the one foot, but then that's for things like, <coughs> things like kicking. But for most part in Qingyi and Bagua, the weight is in, in that position. And you'll notice in Bagua, more so than Taiji, the, way, the weight is here or here. It's never fully forward like this or, or fully back. Hey Russ. So let's just get that happening. Hands out in front of you. You're going to bring this hand across in front of you like so and you're going to bring a one knuckle punch up like that. And as you do that you're going to slap your front foot forward. And again as in the Bagua, you're trying to get that energy from that front foot slapping, coming up out through your fist here. And one knuckle punches like that. It's never like that. You'll break your finger if you do that. It's just very lightly. Another name for a one knuckle punch is a tiger paw. So if you just simply close your fist 
and just have a little bit of that thumb, that finger stuck out. It'll probably do it naturally for you anyway. It's just a little bit of that stuck out, not too much like that, or never that finger. You never use that finger, you'll break it, or that of course, or that one. It's always that one, because when you put your foot on the hand on the ground, it looks like a, a bit like a tiger's paw, like so. And that's the sort of fist we're going to be using, like that. It's so always centered in, in between your feet, never right back or never forward for Shingi or Bagua. So the hand comes down in front and that's going to come up. So we're going to get <coughs> and completely recentered back again. The, the absolute main thing here is to get, regain your, your centering of your center being here. So as soon as you've done it, you're centered again with your energy just slightly towards the rear foot. But you've got to make sure it's not <laughs> See, it was all blocked here then. You've got to loosen your waist and allow that energy from your foot to come up and be translated <laughs> into your front hand. It's no good. I've seen many Xing Yi players doing Xing Yi and they've got lo very loud foot stomps but <laughs> And there's nothing being translated to their hands. No good doing Xing Yi or any foot slapping methods if it's not going to come up. Come up out through your hands, you know, it's got to come out. So let's just try that method. Thanks, Ben. I was just saying, don't do it like, like this, with a circle on the end of it. You don't want a circle. There is a circle, but that's too big. You're going to waste all your power doing that. What you want is, there's a circle. A tiny little hook on the end, and the fist will actually go like that, you see, and that's in accordance with the natural body movement. If something's not natural in the internal martial arts, then it's not an internal martial art because the internal martial arts were solely based upon natural body movement. And so, if your body's going like this, which it should be, it's never ever straight line, you've no power for the straight line. It's got to come through and there's got to be a little hook as you close your fist on the end of it into a one knuckle punch. So it's got to be <coughs> you notice you gain a whole lot more power coming right up through your body when you flick that over <coughs> onto the end of it. Eli. And what you're doing is you're not just doing a straight punch into this pit of his neck, you're taking his throw the punch through your <coughs> you're taking it across and in, which does much more damage to the windpipe in particular, the CV22 point of course, which is basically your windpipe. It's coming in on one side and it's digging and going out the other side. You're making like a chameleon, are you? And digging like that and in and coming out. And of course if it's on the old Adam's app, it'll just it'll rip, put the Adam's apples over here, which is not a very pleasant thing to happen. Okay, thank you, Ben. Okay, we tack on to the end of that, and again, natural body movement, because this one's coming like this, basically, what you're doing is that. So now you want... So now we've got... Xing Yi is very famous for its palms. A lot of people don't know that. They think Xing Yi is all fists with one palm. They think Bagua is all palms with, with one fist. But Xing Yi is in particular very famous for its palms. In particular, a guy called Xiao Shan Khan, who I know, and he's the, one of the most powerful people I'd met apart from Len McLean. He, but I wouldn't want to learn anything from Len McLean. <laughs> I'd want to learn something from Xiao Shan Khan. He uh, was famous for his Xing Yi palm work. And that's, this is one of his training methods in particular that I'm showing you now. So you come to here, and now this just opens like this as you're turning your body. And as you slap your foot down again, it releases down and then centre your energy. Remember, you're centering it just here. That's, that's very important with Xing Yi in particular, is if you centre your energy just here. And as I said, it's exactly the same in, in, in Taiji push hands. The biggest mistake people make in Taiji push hands is, is this. Where the person with legs that big wins every time.